Welcome back to the show. It's been exciting in here in our makeshift studio. A lot of people that don't say the studio is very much fantastic, but let me tell you, it's a makeshift studio we are using. But that now we stand in orange and show that will bring to you, you know, pictures of what's going happen around the world of sports and football in particular. And of course, at local level, you know, the Orange Football Special being sure that, you know, they get stories from both sides. Both Rangers they go on with the clubhouse construction. We're on completion will be the first in the history of Sierra Leone football, constructed by a football team, not bought by a football team, I must say. Probably in history, other clubs, they don't go for buy, you know, clubhouses or what have you. And this clubhouse, they take, sorry, get 18 rooms, all self-contained, a hall, a gym, and of course, you know, dining hall as well, including a secretariat for the Bow Rangers Football Club. Let's watch this insert. Bow Rangers Football Club is the only surviving football club from the southern region in the Sierra Leone Premier League. Since the formation of the club in 1954, the club has recently seen massive transformation beginning from the 2018-2019 league season to the current 2019-2020 season, albeit suspended due to COVID-19. This transformation has seen top football talents from across the country assembled to play for Bow Rangers and for the first time in the history of the Southern Region Giants, they are leading the Premier League table and may be crowned champions if no football is kicked again in the top flight football. Save cancellation by the FA, a situation that will see no representation if in CAF Champions League or CAF Confederation Cup. All of this has been made possible courtesy of the astute leadership of the club's chairman, Babadi Kamara, his executive, and the fans of Bow Rangers. The transformation has not only been limited on the pitch, as sometimes this year, the management of the club launched the construction of Bow Rangers Clubhouse, a project which on completion will put Bow Rangers in the position of envy as the only club in the history of Sierra Leone club football with a clubhouse. Babadi Kamara is the executive chairman of Bow Rangers Football Club. He explains more to Oran Football Special this about world the project. Of Sierra Leone, to be specific, over the years, we don't learn to see people in the build institution them, run them. And once they know the decision, the bound for fail. And my own management, I believe, say, institution will be strong for itself. That even when you left, people don't notice you don't left. So, what we need to write now, now for ensure say Bow Rangers they did forever and ever. And when we get to the call in industrial environment, continuous process improvement, Bow Rangers will only continue to be improved. After each project will complete, we must to find that thing we very important who the club will need, who the town will need, football as a whole will need, and will continue for going back. One of the things in the lacuna say this no, we ask this no, we get a fee. We are in, if possible, let we um, stay there also to play games there. God give you a long life and we body and provision. I believe say that's not what we for do also. Abdul Karim Bangura, the team manager of Bow Rangers Football Club, outlines the club's objectives on the clubhouse initiative. We we, we feel proud. This to start with this is an initiative of the chairman, Mr. Babadi Kamara, na a visionary leader and na man we in anything we did do, he want for see results, he want for see tangibles and he did things he really own. The overall beneficiary, yes, a very good project where we proud of, where we believe say go elevate football. Uh, Bow District and the Southern Region as well. But the overall beneficiary of this project is uh, Sierra Leone, the footballing family in uh, Sierra Leone. We will see I'm saying a uh, Bow Rangers initiative and a uh, Bow Rangers on Statham, but the overall beneficiary at the end of the day is going to be Sierra Leone. Because when once Bow Rangers on Studies, we will go for see another clubs in the country, yeah. we will continue for do the same thing. And as long as every other club do the same thing, then we will see football will rise beyond what we all expect. Yeah, what we, we think we want to achieve is, first of all, we want to get a foundation, or we want to get a strong brand presence of Bow Rangers. The club don't they exist, we don't they get 
offices all over the place. But we won't forget the structure. We do this for let everybody know say Bow Rangers is here to stay. Bow Rangers has been in existence for such a long time, but we don't start slow. But this night turning point in the history. The team captain of Bow Rangers Football Club, Mori Aliu, expresses his delight on the ongoing project. Um, on daily basis, at the young for that, and you know, like yesterday, I go through my phone. I will look at the good pictures they will be the take, the moment they will be the team get fun. I miss them a lot because for quite a long time, we don't get that opportunity. Even at the moment, the way will be the jamot, the will be done. But I miss them a lot. So, every day thinking that sooner or later, we will move into the clubhouse where we all go there. But really um, undertake a job who all we don't see yes, we believe in them. It, it always keeps me happy and that I just want it happen the next day because I believe say if it ever take one month, I say I say long, I want to do my colleagues then that we'll be together again and get the opportunity to begin play. Wow, beautiful insights indeed. I mean, this is what we are talking about. When you bring competition in the game, new phases in the game, a lot of things that happen. One sleeping giant is up now. Bow Rangers, and of course, this is a fantastic edifice, you know, where they own as far as construction is concerned. You know, what does this mean to, you know, football generally in this country? I think it's about standards. I think it's uh, it's very, very, very good for for Bow Rangers and Babadi. I think he's, he's lifted the, the standards up a little bit um, in, in in developing the clubhouse. You know. Um, I think it will, it will be the start of a, of a good, good development project in Bow, in the southern region. When eventually they end back on the, on the, on the process of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the clubhouse itself. You know, I was asking a question saying, what is that clubhouse? So like you just mentioned, it's 18 rooms and a gym, and what is it for? Is it for Bow Rangers or is this going to be an academy clubhouse? So this is the question I wanted to know. In the short term, I think it's going to be to, to, to help Bow Rangers out in regards to the players, which I think, again, if it's about accommodate, accommodating players, Bow Rangers, I have my own opinion around that. If it's to do with um, a youth development academy project, I think it will be absolutely brilliant. For me, I think that's the way forward. I think that's the start of Salon Football's transition. If we can all have that in a different, different situation around clubs, then it gives us a, a lot more going forward in terms of our development. Okay, if we can have that within our transition as far as we're concerned, we'll go a lot forward going forward. In the words of John Kista, taking the cue from what you say clearly, Babadi been mentioned, say, this clubhouse is meant towards developing the game. You know, a lot of players are out there, probably from the west, the south, the, the, the east, far away from Bo. So if they get an opportunity for, for play for Bo, if Bo just going for them, they will be assured that the first thing when it comes to a player stability when accommodation is being settled. So clearly it's a good picture going forward as far as you know that structure is concerned. Zappa. Yeah, rightly a good picture I think. As you rightly said, they are trying to set the standard straight, you know, and um, it's a very, very, very good um, initiative and I think that will send a signal to the rest of the teams, you know, because if um, the teams, all the teams in Sierra Leone, all the Premier League teams in Sierra Leone, uh, 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 consider to have a structure like that to try to keep players together, and uh, then you start seeing um, that kind of development. But as you rightly said, if uh, because Sierra Leone, we really need to go back to the grassroots and try to develop players from grassroots for the future, you know, and. Um, but for now, I believe everything he's doing now is for Bow Rangers. And maybe with time, we will try to see whether it will be converted for, uh, uh, for to, some other reasons. to an academy or something else. Yeah. For Bow Rangers, for sure, having a football academy will not be a bad thing at all because that is what we're always looking forward to. You know, if you go 30 years back down the line or 31 years before our producer was born, you know, get an opportunity for see that when teams then come out to play the Easter Lions, you know, the fisheries, you know, they get the genius side of what they play for us, like you mentioned in the last mm. episode of the show. You know, but now that one day, 19 of the past, not the scene that they at all. And as so we'll take crossover to the topic of discussion for this specific program, we'll for do it. What has gone wrong as far as Sierra Leone football is concerned? And what are the things that we need to do for ensure that we'll bring the game back? Well, not, not really 
past the level we believe, but to the level we believe, particularly going towards 1994 and 1992, we'll qualify to two consecutive nations cup them, and probably better that level. But first, we get for go to that level. They first, we others will be competing before don't go far way beyond that level. But let's get back to that level first. So Zappa, how do we go about this as a country? How really, in general, generally, how do we go about this? Um. Thank you very much. You see, um, I think we got it right in those years because there were immediate replacement for players who were going. Okay. You know, what do you mean, say, established development process? Yes. The yes, and um, sure we place. had a very competitive league. You know, as you can, you can see, before when they were inviting players, maybe they would just invite five or six players and blend them with the players playing. The, the, home league. the home league because we are having a very competitive league players we are fit we are playing week in week out you know everything so that immediate replacement was there you know i believe that's why we got it right you know but the, uh, 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 over the years that has been lacking you know that has been lacking that's why we need to go back to the drawing board go back to the grassroots because i think that's what uh, most of our our, our, our neighboring countries have done countries that are enjoying their football today if you look at the senegal the egypt all those countries they went back to the grassroots they forgot about um results if the results come okay it's fine with them but if the if if the result is not there yes they're on development process you know and then it worked for them today Look at the football they are playing. Look at what they are playing. Look at the players they are producing out there. Mm. And, you where know? They are, so and where they are. You see? Time. And uh, But one thing I will say in Sierra Leone, we are going for this immediate winning. Immediate winning. We want to win at all costs. We don't even want to know whether we prepared well. We just want to win. And it is that has been causing us a serious problem. Yeah, that has been causing a serious problem. Jonas, I will take bringing to this discussion. You know, taking out from the Liverpool point of view, five years project. So clearly, Klopp was hired, and then he came out boldly and said to the board and the fans that you know, get for the patience. This, this is a project we know will come to fruition in the next one year or two years. It's a five years project. Absolutely. But in the process, we will ensure that we improve every year. What really means say. It's about establishing the right and appropriate structures and ensure that you go by them, you know, to the latter, and then you go for produce results. And all of these take real consistency. And clearly at the moment, that is lacking. Where do we start from? Um, just, just going back to what Zappa said, I think, again, that's... Um, I, I, I can remember, you know, I, I, I went to school there in the 80s. You know, I was here. I was in both school and my dad coached my uncle coach as well he was coaching Eastern Lions my dad and the biggest problem we've had in Sierra Leone football is transition in every single aspect of the game we have in a transition um, when you go back to the 80s where everybody thought Sierra Leone football was at the highest peak yes it was because there was a generation of players they were based at home very, very strong. Mm -hmm. There was never the aspect of going overseas to play football. Yes. So everybody and, and, was at home. And that system then be influenced a lot of foreign players also can and play in it. Which improved our game as exactly. well. So we had a very strong league. A lot of players at the time, very young. But if there was about 30 odd, 40 players called into the national team, the senior national team, there's about 60 odd that could come back into the senior national team. That tells you the quality of players that are there at the, time. at the time. So that in itself is about transition in terms of players going into the national team and you still got a whole bunch of players that could come in and fit into the, into the national team as well. Again, that's why the level of competition, the level of club football in Sierra Leone was at the top level. Now, during those areas, during those areas as well, Bawo, we had coaches, we had Gobio, we had Mani Peters, we had Muller, we had, what's the name, the Guinean guy. There was over Blackpool, Kolev. Kolev yeah. There was a good group of coaches at the time that worked with these players, which developed our game, okay? From the 80s, we went into the 90s. What happens in the 90s? 
The okay. whole perception of football changed. Okay? How did it change? From a coaching point of view, a lot of these coaches went. From 1980s, going into the 90s to the 2000s, we had a group of coaches, which was Garincha, Obemezika, Ofi, and Christian Cole. Okay? That was a group of coaches. Every other one, every other coach is left. Kolev went, passed away, the others are left. So we had those group of coaches. There was never a transition in the coaching situation in Sierra Leone at the time. There was never. It was only these four coaches. Today, it will be OB, tomorrow it will be this. They were the four coaches that went through the national team in Sierra Leone. And then what happened? We lost a group of players from the 80s because of age and everything else. They all went overseas. For they went, John Dubia went, Tibati went, Abduko went. So we lost that. They went overseas not to play. They went overseas to start another life. Another life. So now, we are the generation of the 90s players come through. In those generations, what happened? Players started coming through, but then the international football situation came in. Everyone wants to go out. So now players are coming in, they want to go overseas. Players are coming in, they want to go overseas. Whichever way they can go overseas, they'll go overseas. Whether it was to go and play or not to play, they wanted to go away. Because again, you've got to look at the situation in the country in terms of the poverty. <coughs> So players want to go and better themselves. So the dynamics changed. So we started losing players. There were better players that could have stayed there and developed and helped, but no, they wanted to go away. Again, the transition from the coaching was never right. Because when Ofi, Obi and them were coaching, what coaches came through in terms of transition that could take the lead going back into the future? We didn't have that. All we had now was the late Diamantis, Diamond Tools came through, mm -hmm. Led Daifan came through, we lost those. Apart from those generational coaches that have gone out, what came through? We have Shotabu Sanko, Ajina, you have Lamin Bangura, and who else? Musa. Musa. That's the generational coaches that came through. Can you imagine? Out of all those players that played in the 80s, apart from the office and them that have gone in, coming into the 90s, how many coaches have you got come through out of that generation? Only five. How do we expect development to go through in terms of the football in the country? It's not going to work, Bawo. Out to seven million. Now, go back to that transition from those coaches. You have Lamin, you have Ajina, you have them and all these ones. They're going through. It brings us to our generational coaches now. Myself, Zappa, this generation is the 90s generational coaches that are coming through. How many of us? Not a lot. There's about 28 that have got a license. There is more out there. In that 28 that's got a license, how many coaches are really, really getting to the top of the game that could start this development process in terms of bringing the players through to a level that is accepted to start competing for Sierra Leone? We don't have that. So now we're going to, you know that you're one person that's been very, very uh, pro about the, the capacitating of coaches in this country by the FA. So now we're looking at that as well. I said to the coaches, now you've got myself, you've got Zappa, you've got Mohamed, you've got that. How many of us? 20. How do we expect 20 coaches to develop Sri Lankan football when there is a bigger picture around development, not just the Premier League? We have to go back to the youth development programs. And to go back there for us to get that development process right, the experienced coaches have to go down there to get it right for us to go up there. Yeah. Do we have the experienced coaches? No. We are the coaches that are coming through. So what happens down there? How does the development process go down there? So you see when I say there's been a lot of gap around transition. Now when you talk about our transition, because if we don't get the coaches right, we don't get the coaches coming in, but I don't care what happens. We're never going to get players. Because the players have to be developed. Who is going to develop those players? And, and I, I really think Sedan is a very huge problem as far as it is. this aspect of football is concerned. Because you get situations we are in, these players play on their own probably from age six, seven, yes. until they are 15 or thereabouts, yes. mm -hmm. before they come across the first good coach in their life. Absolutely. You understand? So already the person don't get what you call informative years. So not the most important aspect of the it player's is. life. It is. You know, it gone is. without a technical person really guiding his game. So clearly this is a big problem. Also another factor for considering the fact that, you know, back in the days you have a lot of leagues around, you know, mini leagues, and then mini leagues they are get categorization of players so then they play. But now, that's, that's, that's under the dustbin because at the end of the day, you know, whether on a two aside league, a three aside, a six aside, you have all players in the country involved in playing this league from top to bottom. But well, we can start pointing fingers, but we've got to look at ourselves as a whole nation and really sit down and look at it and see where it's gone wrong. We can say, is his fault? Is his fault? But how is it their fault? It's everyone's fault. Because, like you said, like you mentioned, we had leagues that were categorized. 
Okay? Players are going from there to there to there to there. But it became, there came a situation where everything changed because there was nothing else going on. The Ebola came in. We had a period. And for me, I can only say the, the difficult, difficult time Sri Lankan football is going through now is because of Ebola. Four years, Ebola came in. I think it's, it finished everything. Because you know what? There was nothing else to do. It was only the, the inter leagues. And that's where everything has gone wrong. Because you know when people are talking about development, the inter-area league was a, was a, was a, what is it I could say? Was a, was an end to a means. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Like, thank you very much. Exactly. It wasn't. It was an end to a means. You know, just to keep things going. And then that came in. And what happened? All players went there. It wasn't about coaching a, 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 a community league. Yeah. It was about players, come, 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 put them in, go and play. That was it. <laughs> but then you're bringing players into that that have grown older and older and older and haven't gone through proper development process. Mm -hmm. And these are the same players that you want to go into the senior national teams, into categories. How is that going to work? If no, they haven't so gone through the... So, exactly. So if, if we for look forward to really getting started, Zappa, you know, in all of these, you know, the FA and the government of Sierra Leone should the ministry also get more than a moral responsibility for ensure that the collaboration and really corroboration is a top notch for getting right. For example, we cannot develop the game around if we don't get good pitches. As it is in the country, we have about two good pitches. One in McKinney. Yes, you wanted to say I, I just want to say something again. You know, you know, about I was, I, I was sorry I, I came into this. You know, a lot of people are sitting here, a lot of people have got opinions about what they think should, f f should, uh, football should be, not what it is. Okay? Everyone, grassroots, grassroots, grassroots. Everyone, we have to go to back to the grassroots. We have to go back to the grassroots. Is it viable for Syria to go to grassroots football? It's not viable. You've just mentioned that. It's not viable. Why is it not viable? When we talk about grassroots, it's a long-term development project. From 6 to 11 to 12. Okay? Go back straight to what you said. Do we have the facilities to do that development in terms of grassroots? You're talking about start developing 6, 7-year-olds. How do you go and start developing 6, 7-year-olds in a parade field? Come on, let's be let's be let's be yeah, reasonable about it. Exactly. <laughs> so this is where I think, in terms of Australian football, let's start thinking about the environment we are, what is viable, and what is going to work for us. At this moment in time, what is viable for us? What is going to work for us? I think we just need to play, pay premium on youth development projects, which is 15s, 16s, 17s, and we start the development process there. And that's where we start real football. Yeah, and this team will not go without the facilities we just mentioned. Like I mentioned, the whole country will only get two pitches in Kono and in McKinney. The national stadium is a no go zone. Don't call it a good pitch. I will mm. not accept it today, tomorrow, any other day. The one at Bow, no go zone. So clearly, the efforts of government and that of the FA really get for come to Frisian if one for this where I'm going. I'll give you an example. When Germany failed in the 2000 World Cup or 2002 World Cup, you know, where we always say they, they went back to the dream board, whether not, you know, auto card they use or whatever this, I don't know. But what they did was that they go back and develop youth centers. And those centers had experienced coaches where players would not get the opportunity for going to academy systems, they go there and con get contact hours with players. You understand? If a 60 year old go there, you know, after 10 years, you know, three hours average per day, you are talking of a 16 year old player, complete professional, they strike the ball at any angle. The only difference that, that what I get is mental toughness and other people break through. And today, it's a different ball game. Jamming gets, I mean, some of the brightest talents in, as far as world football is concerned. Multiple, then they, then, they, then, they are, then they emerge every other day. You understand? So, so we may say we will achieve such, but really we don't pay much attention to them. If you go back to the school system before, if you go 30 years back, you no go come across an established school, no get play facility. So they will have more than 1,001 schools We not get small part of self for play. So that is also a problem. Also, when it comes to investment into the structures of the game, it's a huge problem because you have schools where they collect money for sports, but you don't really see you know, the sign of sports and the school. I mentioned Fubri College, for example. Fubri College, when I was there some seven to 10 years ago, I would pay 18,000 euros. Every other student will pay 18,000 euros for sports fee. I doubt if they get tennis ball. 
So what thing they do with their money there? I will not blame them. I will blame the Spotify Simitron and Ministry of Education, for example. So now like I said, government also gets a pivotal role. Because Una always said, I come up from the school system. Today, if one for establish an under 17 team, I, I go down, I go, I, it go difficult for a lot of players from schools. Yeah, so right how do you go about it? As you rightly mm -hmm. said, you know, um, it is very difficult because as they say, you cannot give an old dog a new name. Most of these players started playing by themselves. Mm -hmm. Most of us started playing by ourselves because maybe some of us um, were a bit brilliant. You know, when we came to play, we started playing under coaches. We, we cooked, yeah, we catch up you know, we catch it up and then. But it is very, very, very difficult because if you are a coach now, players are coming, they've done everything by themselves. They have their own way of thinking. They have their own mentality. To change that immediately, it is very, very difficult. And you have to have, you, ha you need to have the right environment, as John said. If that environment is not there, if that facility is not there, it will be very, very difficult. You see, uh, I always said, um, every competition, the calendar is always out there. The calendar is always out for every competition in the world. Now, there are some countries, they know that in two years, they will be playing an under-20 competition. They've started preparing now. The problems, because one, we don't have the good environment, we don't have the facilities. Maybe that's why that preparation has not been coming before going to those tournaments. You know, we don't have the environment, we don't have the facilities, and it is very, very, very difficult, as John rightly said. It is very, 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 very difficult. So if we know what's best for us now, we start dealing with the 15th, the 16th, the 17th. Because those are grown-ups now. Those are grown-ups. They know even if you, uh, 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 we, we want to prepare, it, prepare them at the facilities we have, the parade, they, they know what is good and what is bad. You can prepare those players, those ages, those categories. I think we can prepare them now for the future. Okay. Because those those players they know uh, the good from the bad you know even if we don't have the right facilities we can manage them because of their age now okay so you know the i can see my middle ground issue you know it's really difficult for really pinpoint exactly as to say the problem they you know but clearly instability like you mentioned the issue of people and what have you now COVID 19 now a uh, critical issue also We've had instability in the game for far too long from the political point of view, you know, to develop in the game. Because when you have a house divided, you have ones, you have the one, you get the one then where they pray for success, you get the one where they pray for the fail. Because there's this mentality that, ah, if this one succeeds, ah, you go get a good name. So we're not agree. You understand? Yeah. And there's this thought also that they were, they're not going to give me this opportunity for doing this job. So all of this, with Kriuman, they say, you're not going to bomb good picking. So, where do we draw the line when it comes to fighting for this instability, John? You know, sometimes I can say it, it, it's, it's, it's so difficult for talking about the issues here because, again, regardless of what you want for say, how truthful you say, you have people who always blame you. That look, man, they talk this because of this. I mean, but that's the situation we're for you with. You know, um, I think I think it's come to a time by when we've got to think Sierra Leone and we've got to think football development. Mm -hmm. For me, that's where I draw the line. You know, I think, um, yeah, we, we, everyone has got their opinions about their feelings and their wishes about which way they think it should go. Okay. But that's them. But I don't think that should affect the football development process. I don't think that should affect Sierra Leone's development in terms of the football, in terms of growth. I don't think it should. Well, unfortunately, sometimes these things, you know, rightly so or wrongly so, they do happen. But I think we, we, we've got to go, we've got to think forward. I am one of these people, but sometimes we think, well, what's going wrong, what's going wrong? No, let's look forward. Let's start thinking forward and see, okay, now this hasn't been done. Let's start here with a very small scale and see how, can, how that can progress, how that can develop. For me, that's how I, I think it should be. It's like you, you, you go back, you mentioned about, the school league, and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, what is the purpose of the school league? Yeah, we'll have to ask ourselves that question. What is the purpose of the school league? 
Is he a uh, player ID? Is he to identify players? If he's, what is it? Yes, you can do the school league, but there is a, um, what is the purpose of the school league? Is it because we think to say when the school league comes in, the players that are going to be involved in the school league are younger and their ages are correct? Is that why we go into the school league? I, I don't understand that. The, again, the, 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 the coaches that are doing the schools, are they qualified coaches? Are they really developing the school kids to be to the level that is expected? But they are not. And so, clearly, so these, this are, is what, these, these are, are all things. the problems. You know, so, so, so before, before yeah. now, let me just come in, John, sorry for that. Before now, you, you get PE masters in schools where they may not be certified coaches in football, volleyball, or basketball, but they are very knowledgeable in the game. Yes. Today, unfortunately, I have to say this, it's, it's not the same story. No, of course. You have isn't. people coming from the PE system, they don't know nothing about the game. But what? You understand? Having knowledge so, so, so and passing the knowledge. Yes, exactly. And two different things. It's two different so things. So when it comes to when it comes to the school league system, let me can say governments and the FA really need to sit down and strategize and ask these questions and provide answers to them. How how do we really go about you know reviving sports in I'm saying this because I don't know when we we'll forget academy systems in this country. You but, understand? But but this school system, you understand? They encourage players from maybe GSS1, GSS2, up to SSS1. When they see the seniors they play for the schools, it will inspire them. I have to train more so that next season I go for make the school team. And in the process, I mean, I go for play for the school team. I'm sure that's so, so all playing at the school So system. now the process here about the suspension. After the school team, where do they go? Again, we, we, can, we can provide See? an answer to that. I could After say, the school can, team, what did they let go? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. We can, there's a possibility of establishing development centers. Already, yes, already, the uh, government of Sierra Leone get coaches who in the pay. Yeah. Would they on government payroll? Oh, a lot of people don't know this. But yes, government of Sierra Leone get coaches who in the pay every month in this country. And these coaches, they not get TRS as in what they do on a daily basis. The employees of the Ministry of Sports or Sport Council or now NSA, you understand? Ah. What do they really do? What programs do they have? So, we are talking of, you know, a whole lot of, you know, licensing B coaches, license C don't come in. These are people where government and the FA will collaborate and make use of, you understand? And probably develop centers, regional centers, you know. Like you are talking of the 16s, the 16s, the 17s, the 15s. Development centers around the country, in the regions, in the district, mm -hmm. employ these coaches you know, that's a, or increase the number of these coaches at the ministry, you know, so that they go mandate centers there, players go, they get contact hours with them, and in the process, development will start. Yeah, excuse me, please. You, 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 you know, have the platform, Let me sir. go back to this transition, you know. If we've not got it right, we've not got the transition right from the coaches, as John said. Today, I've always been saying this. We thank God. I want, I, I, I'm, I'm always thanking the FE, the president of the FA, the technical department, and this young man sitting here. So the coaches have price tag because they made those causes. Now coaches have license, coaches have price tags today, you know? And, uh, yeah, and you but, guys are separated. Ah, yes. they were analyzing it. Ah, they were analyzing it. But yes, before now, you see, you see order, but if they, they in charge. the transition wasn't there before we came in as coaches. Now, these categories, these categories, there has to be graduation every one or two years. You have to graduate from under 15 to 16, from 16 to 17. And if those experienced coaches who are supposed to be there are not there to develop those um, grassroots, to develop them, how is, how, how is there going to be any graduation? When we went to Guinea, I saw four boys in the Senegal team who were playing for the under-17 when we went to Senegal. They graduated from this under-17 to the under-20. Four players. That's what we call development. You see? Go going back to what Zappa just mentioned, you know, I, I, just, I just thought, you know, when, when I came into Sierra Leone for management, they, we know to grow, we have to develop as coaches because the coaching is the, is the, biggest, is the biggest player around the development process, okay? Going back to what you just mentioned, Bawo, going back to the ball clubhouse, in terms of environment, in terms of where we start, when you just mentioned about we don't have academies, 
this could be a starting point where in the southern region they can start identifying they can start identifying better better good young potential on the 15 on the 16 on the 17 boys that could go into the hostels and develop them that is a process in itself you could have that one now in the southern region you could have the same in the north you can have the same in the east and in the western area okay once you're doing your league situation that's going to be going on again when i came back from morocco on the course i think the, the general section is got very is 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 it's got good ideas about which way the development process has to go i think we've sat down we've really it's because of corona but we were going to embark on that because that's the way forward now even with the with the fifa is an older in the world now uh, uh, it's about players id on the 17s on the 15s on the 17s nationals that's the primary focus now in terms of development okay so i think we're going to look at that in sierra leone and that's where that's what's going to be our starting point wherein the process we start yes the school league will be there but that will be for ids play ids identify bring in we have to start thinking about how we get clubs to manage on the 15 16 and 17 we have to okay i know people say oh the clubs have to have that it doesn't necessarily have to be the clubs anymore let's take it away from the clubs let's look at for example we're going to the northern region we want 20 on the 15 teams that are going to be very very strong in terms of the age situation okay. 20 in the northern region we look at 20 on the 16 teams and 20 on the 17 teams and we have a whole competition running this on the 15s will have all week to play train and then they'll play the games on saturday in the morning sunday morning and then you have the on the 17s which will play probably monday when the premier league is not playing they'll play mondays so you have a whole competition that's going for on the 15s on the 16s on the 17s running for the next six to seven months okay that's an example during those periods we'll have technical teams attached or scouts attached to the under 15 uh, 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 and what is it league wherein they will start identifying players to go into the elite which they will do for those players in the in the in the, in the week they'll get them three times a week identify probably so you get 40 players from that under 15 league bring them now and start working with them on under 15 elite okay same for the 16s same for the 17s so we have that running in the north in the south in the east and the western area at the end of it all is we want to get the best on the 15 boys in the whole country wherein the south will divide their own the north the east will sit down and look at the best potential 30 or 40 players that will form part of the under 15 national okay same for the under 16 same for the under 17 so there's no gray areas anymore so you guys in the north have to look after your own and identify you in the south the east and the western area and then we all come together so it stops all this thing about oh why players are not coming from the north they're not calling from the south they're not now everyone does their own jobs so if we can do all that and we don't have the best players in the country then we failed again but if we can do that and then we get it right where we will know yes we've got the best players in the whole country we've done the work and in terms of on the 15 nationals we have a good group on the 15 on the 16 on the 17 and that's going to be the way forward for us once we have that and then we've got them into for example what Babadi has done a ball for the rest southern region we say the best on the 15 on the 16 group of boys what happens in a month we have a week on the 15s going to the um, um what is it called the ball clubhouse. going to the ball clubhouse we have them for a week after that they go back to school after that we get you on the 16s in we keep doing that every month every month but don't forget what you're getting done is development okay those players are still playing but they're still developing and going through the proper proper situation of development so we can have that in the north the south the east and the west and it's been monitored so nobody can complain say well this and this and that so now we have that if that doesn't work in Gibao, then what is going to work i think it it, it yeah, will surely it work, work because if we go through those processes right and um we may not win a competition because maybe we'll be competing with teams that have started it's long before us but we will surely get it right. Get it and what we'll have as well is 
is a transition of players. Yes. yes. So we'll have players transitioning. Yes. So that means now we're going to start having a pool of players again in the country that will give us the quality to start competing. Because one of the biggest problems we have now, Bawo, we have lost players. We don't have players, Sierra Leone. Yeah, and at this, and at this go, will bring me to the concluding part of this program, this episode and the program eventually as we close. We are playing to qualify for the Nations Cup. I think some four years ago came very close with you in Ivory Coast. And uh, this now being a process we give you bring together some set of players, train, you know, without having any program in place in the first place, asking, ah, we have a good play competition. Mm -hmm. You just kept them together because you you you, you felt duty bound to do so. Yeah? yeah. So keeping this in mind and of course in relation to what things up I also mentioned as to target putting coaches in place and say, let's work this program and see that by this time we should be ready for this. What do for me we are playing the nations for a nations cup now we it got from a difficult for qualify. But yet I don't know. You have you have people with the belief that we go for qualify and for qualify without not even thinking of what to their stake. How do we go about it? Um again unless we you know sometimes we have to be very I have to be very upfront and be very honest. Sure. You know? Um, you'll know when you're ready. You'll know when you're going to start achieving. You know that. I think for us, we're going there. We're going to give you a shot. Well, it's not about qualification anymore. It's about transition now. We've got to start transi transitioning the younger players. We've got to start looking at what it is. We've got to start throwing these younger players in to see the temperament around the levels of football we're going into. And then we start thinking about the next Nations Cup. Mm -hmm. For me, I have the biggest project I have for student football is in the next five years, we qualify for one major championship. That would be success for us. It doesn't necessarily mean the senior national team. It could be on the 20, on the 23, on the 17s. But we qualify for one tournament. I think that would be the transition for us in terms of our football. But for now, let's think about transitioning. You know, people are sitting there thinking, oh, we're going to go qualify, we're going to go and qualify. Um, let's, be, let's be honest. You're not, you're not looking around and saying, we're not good enough in terms of our players. But football is about levels. I've always said that. Sure. Football is about levels. You know, everyone is saying, we've got players, we've got players. The lads that have gone out, the last national team, they've done very, very well. I think that's the most talented group of players we've had. Not being very lucky at all, but they've done their bit, they've done very well. Now they're going, the transition is coming, we're bringing new players in. The new players they are bringing in, what do we have outside? What do we have inside? Again, the, 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 the problem we have is, is a lot of people in the city, this, I think this is where I think Australian football has got the biggest problem. You see these managers in football, so managers that sit on the corner, corner, where you call them, all oh, these players have been play. all oh, these players have been play. But oh, that's the problem, eh? It's put these players in a, in a pedestal where they feel like, they're already world beaters when they know. Because they've got people around them that are not telling them to say no. Exactly. And that's not very good at all. Okay? Everyone is saying, they're watching the Premier League. You've watched the Premier League. And we're thinking, okay, this is we're talking Sierra Leone Premier League. The boys that are coming through have done very, very well. But they need to go through a process of development. They need to know the game. They need to learn the game. They need to know their roles and responsibilities. Before we can go to the next level. But because we don't have academies, because they haven't gone through the normal procedures where it should be enclosed, where the development process is, everyone knows, the centre back knows, when the ball is on the left hand side there, what do I what do I do? When do I max space? When do I drop off? When do I go tight? When don't I go tight? When do I nullify space? All these are things. If you look at the top level professionals like you 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 know as well, Bao. You see players playing, you see, oh, you think they're gonna, he's gonna get tight, they're gonna play into the area, they're gonna run him, they're gonna score. No. What do you do? Do you go tight into areas or do you follow the centre forward into the midfield or do you pass him on? Yeah. And the players come to the Premier League. Yes, the and the, now, exactly. And the players know that from when they're 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 playing. So when they're going now, they're not ready. Coaches don't need to go and tell them again when to get tight, when not to get tight. But at this level for our football, we still need to learn these boys. When do I get tight? About decision making. So at this age, at this level, they're playing in the Premier League. Again, with the coaching. If they don't get it in the clubs, where the coaching is right, what happens in the national team? I have to start all over again. I have to start getting them to understand when do you pass 50 yards, how do you drill a ball, what is a, 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 a long passing, what is about decision making, what is about how do we mark areas, when do we have to start all over again. So this is the time we need because we don't have academies. It doesn't work in the football club. This is the time we need 
to develop these players. Even when the league is going on, we have to have a national team that's working. Okay? We have to have a model for Australian football. Power. All that we don't have. You go to uh, Edwards, they're playing 4 4 2. You go to Lions, I change my system every time. You go to Diamond Stars, they're playing different situations. You go to this, the players are all getting confused. When you bring them to the national team, only what they know in the club is the way they're going to work. But that's not the way you work because you're working in different situations. Yeah. I'm bringing you because I feel we're better in a 4 3 3. But you don't know about a 4 4 3 3. You've been doing a 4 4 2 for the last five, six years. So, how do you come into the national team? Into a 4 3 3. But if we identify it, Syrian football and say, okay, now we've done the 14s, we've done the 15s, the 16s, the 17s. Now we've all come together. These are the coaches. These are the uh, elite coaches that are going to work. This is what we're going to work. What we have in Syrian football is our players and what we think suits us in Syrian football is a 4 3 3. So, everyone that's working around on the 15s has to work on the 4 3 3. And we've got to work on the 4 3 3 with different, different variations around the coaches. So we'll have that on the we we'll have we'll have that we'll have a plan B and then if the players are graduating from under 17 to under 20 they know they're going into a 433 they know exactly what they're doing well how can you be working in a 4231 you're working in a 433 when they're going there what happens confusion so this is the whole structure so we need let's, to put let's together conclude, Zappa, on this Scooby party shots yeah I think uh, he has said it all because um, we need to have a model as he rightly said we need to have a model and it has to be. Uh, on, we are we we are supposed to be on the same side, on the same side because when the player is coming from the under 15 going to the 16, you know exactly what you're going to do there. When you're coming from the under 16 going to the 17, you know exactly what you're going to do there. You know, but if we don't get it right at the club level, and we are not getting it right at the club level because we don't have academies, you see, because if you don't get it right at that younger age, it is very very difficult to get it right at the club level. So we really need to go back and create this environment for academies so where the players will start getting it right at an early age so when they come to club level they know exactly what they are doing so and it will be very very sure. easy for them going to the various this national a, teams. this is a discussion we'll keep going for sure we we'll promise you last week that this week we'll bring you this to brains for sure that we'll discuss the country's football and of course i'm sure the discussion will be very more detailed as far as taking the country's game forward is concerned we'll try again for we will bring the administrators in for say exactly as far as that aspect from government point of view and that of the FA point of view is concerned, how the collaboration work for each other will keep the country game for. And I always look for you in this episode of Oran Football Special, supported by sponsored by Oran and supported by Priority Solution and part of Priority Solution as well. It has been a huge, huge moment here with me. And of course, sitting in between two legends. It shows where how well I don't wash my hand for each other that mm -hmm. I eat with kids. <laughs> And that is why, as a Liverpool supporter, I'm congratulating all Liverpool supporters around the globe and Sierra Leone in particular, including, you know, my producer, more like Cabo, M. Sue Owen, you know, for, uh, he has been around for a while. So the name Owen, he has been around for a while. <laughs> of course, on behalf of my team, Agogo, you know, the crew striker, Richie Bonner, Christian, I want to say, I'm signing out with a bang. And of course, this program will continue for bringing to you details as far as football is concerned. Keep watching, as always. Orange.